presidential run today, do you plan on following suit? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Internet, I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report on February 15th, 2023. We're live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and Locals. Share, subscribe, tap that notification bell if you have not. And if you want to join us for the post-game show where you can add comments, you can correct me if I make any factual errors, and a whole bunch more, you can join us at rubinreport.locals.com. A little bit of a shift today. I want to talk about some of the weird juju that's out there. Not J-E-W, J-E-W, Juju. There's just some weird energy out there. A lot of bizarre things happening, chemical spills and balloons from China and senators having strokes and weird things happening. Are they coincidental? Pipelines blowing up or is there some sort of script that we're all just reacting to constantly? I don't know the answer to that, but we're going to uh, go through some of it because it does seem like the regular day-to-day -day political stuff has slowed down just a little bit, right? We rolled into the new year. Republicans took over Congress. We had a couple hearings. This last week or so feels like it's cooled off in terms of just like nitty gritty political Republicans are doing this, Democrats are doing that. We got through the State of the Union. Now it's just like a whole bunch of weird stuff. I mentioned yesterday this massive, massive explosion and chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio, that the media has completely ignored. Not only the media, but our government has completely ignored. And then finally, it happened, I believe, 12 days ago. We're gonna show you a whole bunch of pictures and videos. Finally, after the last two or three days of people online sharing videos, and it's one of the reasons that they don't want you to be able to share videos online so that they can control the narrative, uh, eventually, because enough people shared videos Kids were out there, literally kids, 15 year olds that live in the area were out there on the streets showing videos of dead fish and dead birds and chemical burns and all of this stuff. Then the mainstream media finally comes around to it and Gay Pete, our transportation secretary who only got the job because he's a homosexual, he had no qualifications other than doing homo things. Uh, he finally, 12 days later, commented on it with two tweets, we'll get to that. And the real question, and I suppose for the show today, is who is responsible for all the weird stuff uh, that's happening right now and who is going to, to do something about it and what is their motive? And are any of those things connected? That's what we will try to decipher today on the Rubin Report. Before we get to it, let me talk to you guys about Birch Gold. Uh, you know, despite the US blowing through the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling in January, the leftist White House still refuses to reduce spending. While our national leadership has buried their heads in the sand when it comes to fiscal responsibility, it's time to pull yours out. Now would be a great time to diversify into gold with Birch Gold. In times of high uncertainty and instability, gold is king. It's dependable. Birch Gold makes it easy to convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in precious metals. Here's what you need to do. Visit birchgold.com slash Dave to claim your free info kit on gold and then talk to one of their precious metal specialists. Think about this, to dig our country out of this mountain of debt, every single taxpayer in America would have to write a check for about 250 grand and it's only getting worse. Protect yourself with gold today by visiting birchgold.com slash Dave. They've got an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers and countless five-star reviews. Go to birchgold.com slash Dave and now back to me. Okay, so let's talk about all of this uh, from the top down. Joe Biden always says we want a bottom-up economy. What does he say? We have a bottom-up economy and a sideways, it goes out like this and this and this, but he's always got everything backwards. Uh, but clearly, clearly one thing that has been unearthed over these last couple of years of COVID craziness and climate craziness and big tech craziness is that there are a series of groups led by some pretty, I would say, terrible people who really want to control your life. They want to decide when you can go outside and what foods you can eat and what stove you can cook on and what temperature you can keep your house and much more. Uh, of course, the leader, the, the pinup model for this is the World Economic Forum's Klaus Schwab. He is Shiv Palpatine in reality. Well, we know we had the World Economic Forum uh, Summit just a couple weeks ago. Now they have another one. 
It's happening right now. It's called the World Government Summit. These people, it's all like right out of, isn't the World Government Summit? Isn't that what the, uh, the super friends were fighting? Oh, that was the Legion of Doom. All right, close enough, guys. You got it. That's where all the bad guys hung out, you remember. Anyway, here is Klaus Schwab at the World Government Summit. And somehow he seems to know that we're going to have a black swan event. Um, a black swan event, by the way, is something really, really bad happens all over the world. Take a look. And the last factor I want to mention is resilience. The capability to bounce back because there will be certainly what we call the black swans, the unpleasant surprises which will come in our way. Certainly be endless surprises. Well, if they're endless surprises, then I don't think they're certainly there. Uh, the black swan events, they're going to come sort of like COVID that kind of fit the narrative that a one world government guy would like get the forces of Western freedom and the defenders of liberal democracies, liberal in the right sense of the word liberal, and the, the governments that defend individual freedoms, notably the United States of America at the top of that list, get them to crush their own laws, get them to eliminate dissent and silence their own citizens. That's what this guy wants to do. at something called the World Government Forum. There's no such thing as the world government. They would like to create one, but no, you as a citizen, if you're watching this from the United States, you only have to abide by the laws of the United States of America, your state, and your country. Uh, and when those laws are unjust, then you have to figure out how to change those laws within, within the laws, because we have a pretty good system of laws to uh, go, out, go out there and amend things and change things and all that. Uh, but they're not happy about that because they want one government. So whether you live in the United States or you live in Sweden or you live in Chad or you live in Switzerland or give me another fun country, my friend, Austria. I didn't know where you were, I thought you were gonna go somewhere in Asia. But the point is they want to control you. Who's another person that wants to control you and how does she want to do it? It's Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg, who no doubt flies all over the place in private jets. Uh, you remember the video a couple weeks ago we played of her being arrested by German authorities, but the whole thing was staged. First, she took a bunch of pictures with them, all smiling. They make sure the handcuffs are on nice and loose and then they carry her away and everyone's giggling. She's got a new book out, people. Here's a tweet from Greta Thunberg. Thunberg, I'm so pleased to share that the climate book is now available in the US and Canada. I have gathered wisdom of over 100 contributors to highlight the many different crises we face and equip us with the knowledge we need to avoid the climate disaster. This is, oh, was there a little more there? That was it, it was just one tweet. I think she had two tweets originally, that's all right. Uh, anyway, she's putting out a book to freak people out. Just like John Kerry, who became super rich on the climate grift. Al Gore, who's worth a couple hundred million dollars after being VP on the climate grift. This is what they do and they want to control you. Climate change is the next one. And would it surprise you if the very people who purport to be all about the environment and green technologies and they love the earth, but you evil Republicans hate it because somehow you care about capitalism or something like that. Would it surprise you if they were actually the ones doing the most damage to the environment? Uh, and not only doing the most damage to the environment, but doing the most damage to the people who live on this earth. Speaking of that, uh, the EU parliament has just voted to ban petrol car sales by 2035. How they're gonna replace them, no idea, but here's uh, some applauding after the vote. Vote is closed and it is adopted and thereby the first reading of parliament is closed. Thank you. Very exciting guys, no more petrol cars in the EU by 2035. Uh, we don't know how we're gonna you know, keep people on the roads or if any of this makes sense, but we just do things that sort of sound right. We'll deal with the consequences later. Speaking of consequences, there is, let's get to this East Palestine story. This is wild. So East Palestine is a little town in Ohio. You have probably never heard of it before this. Uh, it is a little town 
as we're going to show some clips of Tucker Carlson uh, explaining what's going on there in a moment. But as he notes, uh, a lot of white people. So this isn't doesn't really fit the narrative, you know, if, you know, because white people can't be uh, victims, according to the government. Uh, well, on February 3rd, 12 days ago, there was an unbelievable. I don't even know what the right adjective to use to describe it is just an absolutely astoundingly horrific disaster, a train accident that then released unbelievable amount of chemicals into the air, fire, explosions, the whole thing. Here, here's a little video about it that was making the rounds online. Of train derailed Friday, 20 of them carrying hazardous materials as flames lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is in place for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the f the f they burn off in East Palestine. This is not f storm clouds. Look at it. Officials are claiming that the air and water are safe. But residents say they can still smell chlorine. They've complained about their eyes watering when they go outside. And one woman says the noxious air killed her chickens. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and went very fast. Look at all these fucking crows. I'm not kidding. This is within 10 miles of East Palestine. You have not evacuated. Okay, so the images and the video, we could go on and on with all that. I want to get into a little bit of the specifics. Now, first off, I just want to talk about the timeline on this thing. This happened 12 days ago. I don't think I even heard about it until about three or four days ago, and I could be what's called a very online person. So this was not making the rounds. Eventually, it started gaining traction online. Thus, I'm talking about it today. But we did a quick scan of, of virtually every CNN anchor that we could find on Twitter and MSNBC anchor and New York Times journalist. Nobody is talking about this. And certainly nobody was talking about it for 10 days. Putting aside everything else, if you see a massive explosion of that nature, is that not newsworthy relative to, I don't know, what's going on in America? Like just on the NBC nightly news. And today there was a train derailment and a crazy massive explosion. We don't know about all the chemicals yet, but this is worth showing just visually all the flames. It's, it's something, but they all went absolutely dark on this. And as I often say, one of the things that you now know about the news is when they're not talking about something, that probably is the thing to be talking about, right? Like that really is it. Anyway, Tucker Carlson, of course, Tucker is one of the few people that is doing anything roughly approximate to honesty in, in corporate media. Uh, here he is summarizing the conditions of East Palestine. East Palestine is overwhelmingly white and it's politically conservative. More than 70% of the voters in the surrounding county supported Donald Trump in the last election. That shouldn't be relevant, but as you're about to hear, it very much is. 11 days ago, a 150 car train derailed in East Palestine and when it did, it spewed poisonous chemicals onto the ground and into the surface waters. After the crash, the Ohio State EPA found evidence of butyl acrylate in the Ohio River, as well as in the creeks and streams that feed it. Now, this was a concern for more than simply East Palestine, given that the Ohio River supplies drinking water to about a tenth of the entire U.S. population. So this train derailment was an environmental disaster. Not an environmental disaster like climate change is, but an actual environmental disaster. Okay, so this is serious stuff. 10% of drinking water to Americans, right? You can look at all the videos of the dead fish and the dead frogs and the dead birds and other animals and the chickens dying on top of the fact that we already have this national issue with chickens not laying eggs. We haven't covered that yet, but that's another one right now uh, that's really bizarre. Uh, and then the EPA shows up. Now you would think we have this whole movement in America and, and seemingly a global movement that endlessly cares about the environment, right? You should not turn lights on. You should not drive this car. You shouldn't cook your eggs on that stove. And they're always screaming about it. 
But for some reason with this thing, these toxic chemicals in our water, this unbelievable, I mean, these fires and the plume of smoke, we're gonna show you another image on that, that looks like an atom bomb was dropped there. There, they're being awfully quiet on this. Uh, here's a little bit more from Tucker. But we basically nuked a town with chemicals. So then representatives from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, arrived to restore calm. Yes, an EPA spokesman explained, chemicals from the derailed train did enter the local watershed. And yes, they did kill fish. But the drinking water supply remains totally safe. The fish are dead, but go ahead and fill your thermos and brew some coffee. Everything's fine. Now, we don't know if the locals in East Palestine are drinking the water tonight, but we can tell you the Biden administration doesn't seem too concerned about it either way. Donald Trump got over 71 percent of the vote in the county in the last presidential election. That's not exactly the Democratic Party's core demographic. Fentanyl, toxic waste spill, whatever. They're not our voters. OK, in one instance here, I don't want to be quite as cynical as Tucker is being on the election side of this thing. So I don't know that the administration is ignoring this because these are, you know, like white Trump voters there. I don't know that much. I wouldn't put it past this administration because I think they're pretty bad people, but I don't know that much. The point really is that there is a reason they are ignoring this ecological disaster. I don't know that we know that reason yet, but for the EPA to show up there, the Environmental Protection Agency, which is an extremely well-funded agency that has gone well beyond the bounds of what it was originally founded to do, um, that it is telling people, drink the water, drink the water with all the freaking dead fish and the dead frogs, go ahead and drink that water. I have to say, guys, I have always been leery of the, uh, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, because I'm a child of the 80s. And I remember this very important moment. I think this was around 1986. And this locked in my mind what a bunch of frauds the EPA are. Excuse me, this is private property. Shut this off. Shut these all off. I'm warning you, turning off these machines would be extremely hazardous. I'll tell you what's hazardous. You're facing federal prosecution for at least a half a dozen environmental violations. Now, either you shut off these beams or we shut them off for you. As you guys know, that was Walter Peck from the Environmental Protection Agency. And what did he do, Phoenix? That's right. He shut off the ectoplasma uh, containment unit the ecto-containment unit, something, there was some plasma there too. And what happened? All the ghosts escaped. All hell broke loose throughout the city. A couple of years later, they're, you know, fighting this pink slime thing. You got it, guys. Then they release a movie with all chicks, which was horrible. The social justice warriors go nuts. You see what I'm saying here. All right, let's get back to the serious stuff. Uh, here's a tweet from Benny Johnson with, with an image of the plume of smoke over East Palestine. I mean, this is just absolutely wild. And I thought what I thought Benny's uh, commentary on this was quite good. He says, important reminder that the CDC, the NIH, Dr. Fauci, and every vaccine mandate tyrant who screamed at you to wear a mask so we can stay safe are totally silent as children breathe in this black death. The Karens never cared about your safety. They only cared about power, evil frauds. I mean, look at that image. That image, if you just saw that with no context, you would think that a massive bomb, maybe an atom bomb was dropped on a city somewhere far across the world. That is in America, in the heartland of America, in Ohio, within the last week or so. That is absolutely just wild. So I wanna talk a little bit more about the abject failure, not only of our media, but of our politicians, because obviously Biden's barely talking about it. Uh, Gay Pete, our transportation secretary, somehow has been busy doing some other stuff, mostly making sure white people don't get jobs at the federal government. We'll talk about that in just a second. But then one more odd ecological thing that happened, I believe this is yesterday. Uh, here is video of a truck filled with nitric acid that tipped over in Tucson, Arizona. What is going on here? Let's see. Okay, so I am not sitting here telling you that these things are connected. I am not sitting here telling you that these things are intentional. But what I am telling you is that something weird is going on here, the way the media does not react to these things. However, if Donald Trump was president and this had happened, 
of course they would be blaming him. They would be saying, ah, you see why this train derailed in East Palestine? It was because Donald Trump doesn't fund the EPA and we've defunded the roads and bridges and blah, 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 blah. But they do everything for narrative. So now, gay Pete, as you know, I call him gay Pete because he only got the job because he's gay. He was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. It is a tiny little city. What, what about 120,000 people or something? We've checked this before. Something like 120,000 people, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, he is a sort of mini Obama clone. He comes off as deeply inauthentic. He is completely unqualified for the job. So for 10 days, about, it might've even been 11, 11 and a half days, he did not address this. This is the transportation secretary. I don't know what his job is other than to address massive, disastrous, train derailments, that seems like it would be kind of at the top of the list. Uh, but here he is a day or two ago, uh, not addressing what's going on in East Palestine, uh, but he is concerned that too many white people are working in uh, the Department of Transportation. To work with your contractors, uh, to work with your community colleges on building a workforce that reflects the community. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a, a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color, that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs, don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. Right. You can build community wealth that will help close wealth ga gaps in this country if we can tear down those barriers. But that happens at the delivery level. See how whacked out I was going to say a bad word. I'll be nice. Do you see how, how really ridiculous these people are? So what Pete is saying there is that now when, jo when projects, let's say road projects, infrastructure projects come to largely black communities, that the people there are upset because the workers don't look like them, who walks around in that state of racial psychosis except a modern progressive? Oh my God, they're here and they're fixing the roads. Can I get the color breakdown on those people? That guy over there pouring the tar is Asian. Can we count the... Think how profoundly stupid it is. But speaking of profoundly stupid, we just checked some numbers. South Bend, Indiana, where Gay Pete was the mayor, the unqualified transportation secretary, Gay Pete, 75% white. Why did Gay Pete not put some white people on trains? It's coming. Put some white people on trains and bus in some black people. I don't know why Gay Pete didn't do that. You're gonna have to bring that up with Gay Pete. But Gay Pete finally did tweet about East Palestine. Finally, 12 days later, here's what he said. I continue to be concerned about the impact of the February 3rd train derailment near East Palestine, Ohio, and the effects on families in the 10 days since their lives were upended through no fault of their own. Funny, he didn't comment on it for 10 days. It's important that families have access to useful and accurate information. USDOT, that's Department of Transportation, has been supporting the investigation led by the National Tra uh, Transportation Safety Board. Our Federal Rail Administration and Pipelines and Hazardous Material teams were on site within hours of the initial incident and continue to be actively engaged. So he said nothing. That's just a bunch of nothing. And he did it 10 days later. And we are to believe that this guy is in charge of the Department of Transportation. We have a massive environmental disaster. The environmentalists are being silent and we have a completely unqualified um, head of the, the transportation department. It is insane. Uh, I did see a few memes of Pete that I thought were worthy of showing. Uh, so I tweeted these out. If you want them, I'll post them in the locals community so you can snag those images yourself. There you go. There's Pete with his helmet riding away from the giant ecological disaster. There's Pete smiling. He's thinking about the environmental disaster. And there's Pete with his open cardigan. Today I solved racism at construction sites. Look, at the end of the day, you have to laugh about these people. It does, that's not to diminish what's going on there, but like these people are absolutely ridiculous. How ridiculous are they? Well, Pete continued two days ago where he still at this point had not even tweeted about the, the incident in East Palestine. And here he is making jokes about that Chinese spy balloon. And that's where our partnership comes in. We're providing, again, more funding, but you all are gonna need to put together the local information and the localized inputs on the applications about where some of these chargers actually need to go. Right. So that's just one example of the partnership that, that we are building up, but it couldn't be a more exciting time 
for transportation. Uh, it, it's had its challenges. Right. Uh, I mean, if you look at what the American transportation systems have faced in the last two or three years, partly because of the pandemic, we've faced issues from container shipping to airline cancellations. Mm -hmm. Now we got balloons. That's right. Um, <laughs> But also the best time ever to be working in transportation because of these resources. And we know ultimately it's in the hands of uh, those who are on the ground that the biggest difference is going to be made. He's just nothing. What he is is a guy with a, a tight haircut and a well-fitting suit who sounds like Obama, who knows nothing of what he speaks to joke about the Chinese spy balloon. I joke about everything, but it's not like this guy is a jokester. Right, like So he, he dismisses it. What he wants is you to dismiss it. He wants you to, every time you hear Chinese spy balloon or our airspace has been violated or anything else, to just, it's just kind of funny. That's just something Republicans think about, right? It's not something real. We have no idea, first off, how many of these have come over and we blew up one over Canada. We don't know what information they were getting from secret military sites and nuclear sites that they were flying over and what they transmitted back to the Chinese. But uh, balloons, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny. By the way, as we were playing that clip, my man Chris, working remote from another location, not in Florida. He's our employee, not in Florida. He has his reasons. Uh, he did a little Googling. 52% of construction workers are not white. So that, right, 52% not white or 52% are white? Oh, 52% are white. But that's pretty close to 50-50. So if you really care whether the guy who is painting the lines in the middle of the road is white or black, you pretty much got a 50% chance that he's white or black or miscellaneous, okay? These people are unserious, ridiculous clowns. Oh, speaking of unserious, ridiculous clowns, uh, Joe Biden is the elderly man pretending to be president. Uh, he did an interview here, and you can see that the drugs were wearing off in the middle of it. He starts losing himself, uh, which often happens. And uh, he's also telling us not to worry about that balloon thingy. Wasn't it a, a major breach, security breach for the United States, just the fact that the balloon came into the airspace no. and flew over the country for so many days? No, look, <laughs> the total amount of... Uh, Intelligence gathering is going on by every country around the world is overwhelming. And the idea that a balloon could traverse, uh, break American airspace is, uh, anyway, it's, it's not a major breach. You must understand that Joe Biden has no idea what he's saying. And, and you could see the thought sort of just jumping away from him as he's saying it. Um, it is very clear that a violation of our airspace is a problem. And we do not know what was being transmitted. Or perhaps we've subsequently found it out and they're not telling us. I, I don't trust anything from this administration anyway. Uh, but his dismissal of this, well, then why did we blow the one up over China? Why did we wait to blow this one up? Why didn't we just send it back to them and then send a, a sternly written, uh, sternly worded letter? You Chinese people, stop sending your balloons. What do you think it is, Chinese New Year? No more balloons. Just ridiculous. Uh, but watch this. This is just great. Because as you know, it's not just Biden that's incompetent. It's not just uh, Pete that's incompetent. It's the entire administration that's incompetent. But why do they somehow get people to vote for them? Because they have an entire structure, a mainstream media powered by big tech that goes out of its way to defend them. It not only does that, but it would do the complete reverse if it was a Republican in charge. So here's a nice video compilation of the leftist media holding water, carrying water for Joe Biden. Republicans argued that the balloon, the size of three school buses, should have been taken out over the Pacific. If you're Biden, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Let's say he had shot this down somewhere over the country. All this metal and glass comes clanging to earth and could have hurt somebody. And it lands on something, hurts somebody. Three buses worth of metal will be falling down, potentially on hospitals, potentially on kindergartens. That could hit a kindergarten, a hospital. Heaven forbid, fall on a kindergarten or a hospital. Isn't it defensible that they would not want to take down something that could have hit a school or a church or a farmhouse. It's easy to start spinning in the absence of more concrete information. Well, obviously, this is serious, but I thought that producers had smelling salts off of the, on the side of the set for Republicans who came on. Republicans practically tripped over themselves over the weekend to call out President Joe Biden. Oh my God, this is, I mean, just hyperventilating about this. Is there a specific 
<clears throat> a specific part of the country where they think or say specifically, this is where it should have been shot down? I mean, what are they talking about? We should have shot down this balloon over the Aleutians. Well, they're, they're, they simply don't know, Jake. The administration did what politicians usually say they want administrations to do, uh, follow the advice of, of the Pentagon. Guys, the shrapnel might fall on a hospital or on a kindergarten. There were a million opportunities to blow this thing up. I'm not diminishing the fact that you don't want three buses, bus worths of, uh, of metal to fall on people, uh, but you also don't want a enemy rival nation uh, taking pictures and video of say your nuclear sites or other top secret information. Now I know we're not that very good when it comes to protecting top secret or classified information. Often I'm told if you keep it near a Corvette, that somehow will keep you safe. Um, but of course, this is just the complete reverse. Imagine if Trump was president, a Chinese spy balloon went over and then Trump didn't shoot it down until it had traversed the whole country and everything else. The exact same frauds that you just watched there would be saying this proves that China is in charge and they have information on Trump and somehow this is related to Russia and Trump is weak and blah, 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 blah. You get it. But really the point of all of this really is that why is it that these people three weeks ago or whatever it was, two and a half weeks ago, felt that the Chinese spy balloon as it was traversing the country, it was the biggest freaking deal known to man. Uh, but then they will defend the guy who so nonchalantly dealt with it right? And who clearly doesn't even know what he's doing. China has satellites that spy on us. We have satellites that spy on China. They don't need a balloon. So what type of provocation really was this? What really is going on here? That I don't have the answer to, but I assure you, you will not get the answer by watching corporate press. Uh, interestingly, here is video of, from CBS News that uh, U.S. intelligence knew the balloon was on its way before it even got here. So we could have blown it up when it wouldn't have fallen on a hospital, a kindergarten, a bowling alley, or God forbid, an ice skating rink. Back here in Washington, there is breaking news tonight on that Chinese spy balloon. CBS News has just learned that U.S. intelligence watched the high-flying airship as it lifted off near China's south coast. That means the U.S. military had been tracking it for nearly a week before it entered U.S. airspace, longer than originally known. CBS's Nancy Cordes is at the White House. So, Nancy, they were watching this from the beginning? They were, Nora, and what they saw was this balloon heading east from China towards Guam and Hawaii. But then it took a sharp northward turn, a beeline towards Alaska. They also revealed today that the three subsequent objects they shot down probably were not involved in spying. The three objects shot down this weekend may have been harmless research balloons. That's now a leading theory for the intelligence community. There's strong consideration that these uh, objects are indeed benign. They won't know for sure until they find the debris. They're in very difficult terrain. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff described the challenge. One object came down in the Arctic Circle, where it's minus 40 degrees. The second came down in a hard-to-reach part of the Canadian Rockies. And the third plunged into Lake Huron, a couple of hundred feet deep. We'll get them eventually, but it's going to take some time to recover those. Do you guys get what happened here? We knew the thing was coming and then it's on its way to Guam. <laughs> it's on its way to Hawaii and it's on its way to Alaska and we didn't do anything about it. Uh, I'm not a geologist. I don't have a map in front of me or even, well, I guess I've got a globe behind me, uh, but you know what's between uh, Guam and Hawaii and Alaska? Water, cool, crisp, refreshing water and we could have blown this thing up. We could have blown it up the safe. Let's just say we were just, we just, oh, we don't know. They're just sending out their little benign balloon. It's floating around. We don't know what's happening. It does seem like it's going in our direction, but okay, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be, you know, intentionally provocative. How about the moment it crossed U.S. airspace? Since when do we let other countries just fly some shit in? We don't know what it is. Might be benign. Could be an EMP, who knows? Let's just see what happens. It's so profoundly ridiculous that it is, 
well, speaking of profoundly ridiculous, I've got a clip of Justin Trudeau uh, because he's concerned because UFOs are flying over North America and, you know, we had to shoot one down over his country because he was probably busy, you know, buying new socks. NORAD told the Associated Press this weekend that they have an idea of what this aircraft is. Is there any reason we don't have more information on what this aircraft is? Our focus right now is on recovering it. Obviously, uh, there is much analysis going on at the highest levels of NORAD in both Canada and the United States to try and understand more, to facilitate in the location of the object and to uh, understand better uh, you know, the, and be able to answer the questions that Canadians have. And uh, as soon as we have uh, more clarity and better answers to give to Canadians, we will be giving them. So this is uh, three aircraft shot down this weekend, or this past weekend. Do we have no idea whether this is a pattern or whether these are connected? Well, I think obviously there is some sort of pattern in there. The fact that we are seeing this uh, in a significant degree over the past week. Uh, is a cause for uh, interest and, and uh, 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 close attention, uh, which is exactly what we're doing. We've employed signif deployed significant resources here uh, to be able to recover the, uh, the object, as well as uh, diplomatic and uh, international engagements going on uh, to find more information and to get solutions on this. You got it. It's just meaningless drivel. Also, why was he reporting from Hoth, the ice planet of Hoth? Did you see the Tauntaun? run by him back there, which was making me think, you remember at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, do you know how the whole thing begins since Trudeau was obviously standing on Hoth? Remember, the rebels have a base and Vader, he's pissed and he wants to take out the rebels, especially that Skywalker dude who just blew up his big ship, the Death Star, at the end of part one. So what does he do? He sends a bunch of satellite spies. They're not balloons, but they're electronic devices. He shoots them all over the galaxy. One lands in Hoth. They find the, the satellite there, the spy satellite. And then what does Han Solo and Chewie do when they're first, they have to save Luke from the Wampa. Wait, did that happen after? Did they save Luke from the Wampa first or after? And at moot point, that's a sidebar. Uh, but what do they do? They don't wait to go, is that thing benign or is it actually spying on us and they're gonna blow up our generator and we're not gonna be able to get the ships off hot. They blow the fucking thing up. You see the point guys? were governed by morons. I would much rather have whoever was in charge, the, the rebel leader at Hoth would be a hell of a lot better than Justin Trudeau. Here's Corinne Jean-Pierre and she doesn't know what's going on. At this point, but on the criticism of uh, coming from lawmakers that the president hasn't spoken out more on this, uh, should we expect to hear from him at some point or is part of the reason that we're not hearing from him because as you said, people shouldn't be panicking? Is there a concern I, look, that the president- I, I, don't, have a, I don't have any, um, any announcement or anything to preview on a potential um, you know, um, remarks by the president. Should people be panicking? You know, a bunch of UFOs were shooting things down, spy balloons over here. She don't have anything. She, I don't know, how the hell am I supposed to know? I, I just put on these colorful outfits and do my perm and get out there and just say, I don't know what I'm doing. That's my job. Ugh. Guys, there are so many bad actors here. There are bad actors like across the board, our political leaders, our media leaders, our tech leaders. There's just so many like corrupt buffoons in charge of everything right now. It is, thank God we live in Florida. So right after this show, instead of punching a random person as I used to do when we lived in California, I can just walk outside and see a lizard. That really is what's keeping me going at this point. Uh, they lied to you guys. They lie about everything and they will lie again, and, and you must just keep going to the truth. You must not fear the mob judgment if you say, well, I'm curious about that balloon over there, and I'm a little worried about that atom bomb looking explosion over there, and all of that stuff. We have to focus on what we can control. That's all of our local stuff, right? That's what states' rights and all that is about, because now to get us back to the beginning of the show when we talked about this one world government, well, Klaus Schwab continued at the conference and tell me if this doesn't, I mean, the, the guy is right out of casting 101, give me the most evil sounding guy possible with the most evil sounding script. Could you do that? Here we go. And we are just now where we move into the exponential phase. And I agree, artificial intelligence, but not only artificial intelligence, <clears throat> but also the metaverse, new space technologies, and I could go on and on, synthetic biology. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected. And who masters those technologies 
in some way will be the master of the world. If you master those technologies, you'll be the master of the world. Sort of godlike. Remember when John Kerry said, we're like gods. We're like gods here doing our environmental thing. We're so great. We're such gods. I mean, like the script, you get it? Like who would say something like that? But there's just tons of them. There are tons of them and they're hypocrites and they're liars and they're buffoons and they would never live the way they want you to live. So here is a guy who invented viruses. Not, not the first inventor of viruses, but invented viruses on computers. I'm pretty sure I can say that. I'm sure NewsGuard's gonna fact check me. Uh, but remember when computers came out, like sort of ubiquitously across America, late 80s, early 90s, we started, you know, the Apple computer was first, then we had these IBM computers, then all these knockoffs and they all had windows and then suddenly viruses. You would go to open up a window, there'd be a virus, five more viruses and mostly, uh, you kids don't know this, but back in our day when we had computers and we'd sit at the desk with the computer, mostly you were just closing windows because viruses just kept popping up. It was just a lot. People's fingers were like this. They couldn't, they had, there was a condition because you were just all day long closing viruses on your computer. Uh, of course, Windows was created by Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the biggest climate hypocrite there is. He got asked by a journalist about his climate hypocrisy and what he tries to back out of it, but uh, what? What do you say to the charge? that if you are a climate change campaigner, but you also travel around the world on a private jet, you're a hypocrite. Well, I, I by the gold standard of funding Climeworks to do direct air capture that far exceeds my family's carbon footprint. And I spend billions of dollars on, on climate innovation. So, you know, should I stay at home and not come to Kenya and learn about farming and malaria. Anyway, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with the idea that not only am I not part of the problem by paying for the offsets, but I also through the billions that my Breakthrough Energy Group is spending, that I'm part of the solution. No, you're not part of the solution. And yes, you should stay home, much like you endorsed for us plebes, to stay at home and be locked down. When you uh, were, of course, staying home during COVID, you have, I don't know, he's probably got a dozen houses, you know, billions of dollars worth of real estate. He's the number one farmland owner in the United States. Should he not get on his private plane and go to Kenya? I'm pretty sure the people, you know, the Bill Gates plane is landing. You think the people are like, oh, it's Bill Gates. We're so excited. Bill Gates is here. Bill Gates. We just have to keep exposing these people because they will mandate more rules on your life and an awful lot of people are going to disappoint you when they do. They will come back with masks, whether it's COVID-9 or environment related or whatever it might be. They will come back with more booster shots and all of the stuff. And, and this one's going to blow your mind. I saw this one yesterday. This is just incredible. Do you know this is true? ladles and jelly spoons, this is totally true, that the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is still recommending masks on two-year-olds now, and they refuse to reverse it. So Rochelle Walensky, who is uh, in charge of the CDC, uh, she was testifying yesterday in front of Congress, still defending this concept. I do want to mention one thing. I, I told you guys when we went to D.C. a couple months back, that I was walking, uh, they have the tunnel, I think, that goes between, what was it, between the Capitol and the... Uh, where the where Congress con the congressional offices basically so there's this underground tunnel we're walking through the tunnel and I walked right by Walensky like we basically touched shoulders and there was something about her I kid you not we all looked at each other like she does not seem human she might be some sort of lizard person NewsGuard you can check me on that one because I'm pretty sure we'll find something very disturbing and cold blooded anyway here's CDC's Rochelle Walensky defending masks on two year olds yesterday. In fact, the CDC is currently the only national or international public health agency that recommends masking two-year-old children. I'd like you to explain in detail the process and the timeline by which evidence such as this is used by the CDC to update, modify, or necessary withdraw current guidance. Great. Thank you for the opportunity to clarify on those points. So I believe you're referring to the Cochrane Review study. This is an important study, but the Cochrane Review only includes randomized clinical trials. And as you can imagine, many of the randomized clinical trials that were included in that were for other respiratory viruses, not COVID-19. Some of them were for COVID-19, just to be clear. But it is very different for COVID-19 because you have a, a, pre, a virus that 
a different from flu, but potentially different from SARS or MERS, transmits before you actually have symptoms. So, it's also the case that the, one of the limitations in that study was clearly stated that um, people were not actually engaged in the intervention. So you actually have to wear the mask okay. for it to work. Okay. So there Dr. are Walensky? lots of studies now in Georgia. Dr. Walensky, why are we masking our kids today? You know, thank you. Also, so our guidance um, for school-based masking is related to our COVID-19 community levels. And fortunately, we're in a place now in this country where most of our country is in green or yellow. So what is your timeline for updating, reevaluating these guide guidance? You know, our masking guidance doesn't really change um, with time. What it changes with is disease. Your abject nonsense. Now, I hope, and I know if you're watching this show, you are no longer listening to the CDC, and you should not. You don't have to listen to me. You should make whatever choices are right for you and your family and everything else. I can tell you, I got two kids downstairs, uh, both of whom are actually a little under the weather right now, and David's a little under the weather too. We're running an infirmary here right now. I'm the, I'm the only one operating 100%. So I'm gonna have a very crazy day after I uh, finish this. There's gonna be a lot of spit up all over me. Is what it is, that's just fine. Um, I am never putting masks. I mean, the idea that you would put a mask on a two-year-old because that crazy, dishonest, blank, fill in the blank yourself, wants you to do it after all of this time, after lying about everything, lying about social distancing and masking, we know now, go to CVS, go to Walgreens, go to the pharmacy of your choice, pick up a box of masks, and you know what it says on the side? Does not prevent COVID. This crazy woman still will not reverse. I'm telling you, she's a lizard. We should have stopped her. We should have stopped her. And it could have been like the end of uh, Ace Ventura. Remember, when, and then you see the penis. Okay, uh, here's Bernie Sanders. And, and I haven't played a video. God knows how long it's been with Bernie Sanders. I mean, it's funny. The revolution just ate the guy. He's completely irrelevant. He's just this old babbling socialist buffoon. Nobody cares about him anymore. But here's Bernie. And suddenly he's very upset about what we did to kids. Now, this is a guy who, of course, loves the teachers' union. We'll get to that in just a second. But he's very upset because uh, they lock kids down. And, of course, he was for all the lockdowns. He loves government. There's nothing that Bernie Sanders loves more than government and taking money so government can do things. And he loves middle management and bureaucracy and all that stuff. But now, you know, three years later, he's upset because, yeah, a couple kids are there. Well, the kids are stupid now, basically. And then I talk to kids about the isolation they experienced in COVID, the disruption for the first time in modern history of this country. We all went to school. So in kindergarten, you go to school. These kids' lives have been disrupted. They didn't get the education that they needed. They didn't see their friends. They didn't play ball. They didn't do theater. Okay? And on top of that, they're sitting worrying about whether the planet is going to be here for them when they are older because of climate change. So they got all of these things on their minds. The kids are worried. They're worried because we locked them out of school. Like, sure, I did it too. Everybody did it. We all did it. And every, I did, they don't go to school and put on the mask and make sure you're vaccinated. And now they don't go to basketball and they're not going to theater. I don't know, I'm not sure. Am I doing Jackie Mason or Bernie Sanders? I thought you had a schmuck like me and I can't do it. Right? <coughs> Bernie. Well, Bernie, this one's for you. Here's a picture of you and Teachers Union President Randy Weingarten. You love her, you old socialist buffoon. Yes, he was in on it with all of these people. But no, I'm Bernie Sanders and kids come back. Uh, kids are also dying of heart attacks at an increasing rate. Uh, CBS covered that. Uh, heart attack deaths have become more common across all age groups since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. But a recent study found that young people are actually most at risk in this case. According to Cedars Sinai Hospital, the number of heart attack deaths among 25 to 44 year olds in the U.S. over the first two years of the pandemic was 30 percent higher than predicted. What can I tell you? I don't know. Did we inject a whole bunch of young people with all sorts of weird stuff and we didn't know what was going on? Did we strap weird shit on kids' faces? And did we scare the hell out of them about the environment? That was the other part of the birdie. I'm not worried about the environment. Ugh. Remember my video on PragerU about the bravery deficit? I think it was my third uh, PragerU video. That's all we need, guys. Just get over the bravery deficit so that when a woman like Walensky says something, you just laugh in their face. And when a buffoon like Bernie says something, you laugh in their face. 
or when Randy Weingarten or Joe Biden or any of these people, Gay Pete, any of them, when they say something, no, you are liars. You are all in on the lie and I will not participate in the lie. I will no longer participate in the lie, right? That's the great Alexander Solzhenitsyn quote. Like all you have to do to stop this thing is stop participating in it. People participate in the lie because they're afraid if you don't participate in the lie, the thing will come get you. And that might be true to some degree, but do you think playing that ever, that never ending game of, of shaving a little bit of truth off the top, do you think that'll save you? I don't think so. I don't think so. And when you do the right thing, you are rewarded for it. Ron DeSantis. In Florida, we do education, not indoctrination. And so that runs afoul of our standards. And, you know, many people agree with that in other states. We were just the only ones that had you know, the backbone to stand up and do it because they call you names and they demagogue you when you do it. But look, I'm so sick of people not doing what's right because they're worried that people are going to call them names. We're doing what's right here. Do what's right. People will call you names, but then you get results and you end up in this case this case, living in a state that is free and flourishing and in line with your values. That, that's how you do it. Uh, to end today's show, I want to circle right back to the beginning. We started by showing you a video from this one world government conference with evil Palpatine talking about being a master of the universe and all of the horrible things that he will do to you people. But then they oddly Skyped in Elon Musk and Elon Musk wasn't having it. One thing I should say, on, and I know this is called the World Government Summit, um, but um, I think we should be maybe a little bit concerned about uh, actually becoming too much of a single world government. Um, if, if I may say that we want to avoid creating a civilizational risk by having, um, frankly, this may sound a little odd, too much cooperation between governments. Um, you know, if. You know, if you look at, say, the, at history and the rise and fall of civilizations, um, the, the really all throughout history, civilizations have risen and fallen, but it hasn't meant the doom of humanity as a whole because there have been, there've been all these separate civilizations that were separated by great distances. So I think we want to be a little bit cautious about uh, being too much of a, world, of a single uh, civilization because if we are too much of a single civilization, then if, if if, we, if the whole the whole thing may collapse. It would not be good if the whole thing collapsed. Now, there's an awful lot of reasons that some of the people in charge right now are worthy of a collapse, but I don't want to deal with the residual fallout of that collapse. And Elon is right. When they want one world government, well, if you have one structure above all of us, then some shit goes down over there and it's going to hurt you over here. So again, we should be reverting back to the way humans lived for literally thousands of years, where you were dependent on your family and your community and everything was local. And that's not to say technology is all evil. And it's not to say that there is no way for governments of other, well, certainly of states to work together on things and then countries to work together on things and all of that stuff. But something is very wrong about this thing. So it's quite beautiful that that conference uh, ended with Elon basically putting a poop emoji on the entire thing because uh, he happens to be the richest guy in the world who is fighting for free speech and fighting for the ability for nations to exist for a purpose other than just giving power over to Klaus Schwab and those other people. Uh, Folks, that's our show for today. I've got a post-game show coming up with a second on local. No, I'm losing it now. Anyway, there's a post-game show. And, uh, we don't know why we're doing a post-game show. It's just something we do. Uh, we'll vaccinate people who come in. It's very exciting. Children are depressed. You can join us at rumorreport.locals.com. And if you don't, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot... Him, uh, foot, foot 